Welcome back, Horlines, to another Kickstarter update. What the fuck is the game hoarder pledging on lately? Uh, I did one of these a while ago, I think. Can't quite remember exactly what kind of detail I got into. But there's been quite a few more pledges going on, so I figured I would go ahead and do an update video and uh, show you what I've been up to on the old Kickstarter, my uh, latest and greatest addiction. Uh, so yeah, you probably already know that I'm uh, really looking forward to Wasteland 2. That should be out soon. I, I th think, I, yeah, I did do a video on the uh, demo. Um, so, and I didn't want to play too much of that. Again, I don't, I'm not really big on alpha testing or beta testing. I know I've said that before because usually that is the first hour, a few hours of the game. And I like it to be a complete surprise as much as possible. So I'm really, when I get demos or alpha or beta, I kind of look at it maybe for 15 minutes max. I certainly don't read through any of the dialogue. I just click around and try to get a feel of the, the physics, the in-game content, like the characters, sh the screens, things like that. And plus, <clears throat> when you're playing like an alpha especially, you know, it, it can vary so much from the final product. And I just... I'd rather just see the complete thing instead of kind of have like this, ew, what the fuck is this feeling? Uh, you know, like, goddamn, I hope they fix this, this, and that. So I'm really not big on alpha or beta testing. So I, what you saw me play of that Wasteland 2 demo was all I've ever played and all I will play until the final version comes out. Uh, and, of course, I would like to eventually get around to doing Wasteland 1 uh, as well as Fallout 3, Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, and then I think we'll pretty pretty much be wrapped up on those uh, that apocalyptic series. Leo Shoe Larry already did a Kickstarter on that, and uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing a part two video later, which kind of shows some of the physical stuff that I have from this. This is kind of the uh, the digital part, and then next will be the physical goods of what I've received so far. Uh, I originally got a crushed Leisure Suit Larry box. They were nice enough to send me a nice new one. Uh, so I'll be able to show you that. Unfortunately, the I had a naked lady pin and used condom, and uh, that's all in the crushed box, which is packed up. All my PC games that I moved from Florida are still in their boxes. I plan on unpacking those soon and actually moving them out of cardboard into nice plastic heavy-duty crates and uh, Ziploc bagging all of them as well for extra protection. Uh, so maybe when I do that, I'll grab that because I have no need for the crushed box anymore. I'll grab those goodies and, and do those in a future video. Shadowrun Returns, already LP'd that. You've seen that, and I'm pretty sure I did a video on the goods for that as well. Um, great game. The DLC is going to be out very shortly. Uh, I'll probably wait until I get some more of my LP and my current stuff done before I even bother starting that because it's... It's a pretty full-length campaign, so. Uh, two guys uh, from Andromeda Space Venture. Definitely looking forward to this. This is their, uh, you know, spiritual successor to the Space Quest series, which we all know I'm a huge fan of. I've done all of them at this point. I uh, just recently finished this, the latest Space Quest Six and uploaded that. So, again, I played a real short demo of this, one of the early demos. And it looked, it looked like it was coming along nicely. So obviously they're they're taking their sweet time. Because I pledged on that quite a while back. Um, also Project Eternity, which uh, is now named Pillars of Eternity. That is going to be epic, to say the least. Um, I'm sure... Alright, yeah, what else here? Hero U... That is the spiritual successor, um, uh, the Coles on the uh, Heroes Quest franchise. I did get a couple physical goods for those, which I'll be showing later. The game's moving along nicely, and uh, hopefully we'll see that released later on this year. Pretty excited about that. Also played a short demo for that. Definitely rings home to the old classic Sierra Point and Click type uh, adventure game. Uh, Shadowgate, another one I'm really excited about. Actually, I did get, uh, the I got some posters for Shadowgate, uh, but I'm really more or less looking forward to my boxed edition and the game of Shadowgate, but that one's coming along nicely too. We should see that uh, pretty soon here in 2014. 
Pure Solar. This is going to be a really cool uh, game, kind of fashioned after the old uh, Sega. I believe it was a Sega game or a Mega Drive game back in the day. And they're doing a, a nice touch up to it. Really looking forward to that one as well. I actually got a PC box version. So, uh, Sue Generis, that is going to that is going to be a really cool RPG with some super special uh, effects and physics. That one's coming along pretty nicely. I've been looking at some of the in-game play demos that they've been releasing, and uh, the battles and the fights are looking really cool. I mean, you can really kind of feel the the hit from the blades. And the impact from from all the different you know weapons and blows and heavy swords you know make the make the characters stumble back more you know lighter swords don't don't have quite the reaction of course so that one's definitely looking interesting uh, and Therion that's going to be like a tile based RPG we should uh, we'll be seeing a special appearance of Lug Lug in that I pledged enough to uh, get Lug Lug into the game. As a NPC, uh, under the Half Dome is just a musical uh, CD from Ken Allen, who composed a lot of the original music for Sierra Online back in the day. Uh, but he's since he's been helping out with the Space Venture uh, guys and helping them uh, get their game together. So it could be a while before we get that CD. Uh, Mage's Initiation, another classic Sierra style adventure RPG. That one should be released later this year as well. I did do the demo for that. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. Going to be getting a lot of nice goodies from them as well. Uh, Dungeon Roll, I did do a video about that. That's one of the, that is the first board game I actually pledged on. Uh, and that kind of started a whole new demon with me on, on Kickstarter, as you'll soon see. I probably have just as many board games uh, that I've pledged as I do video games at this point. And I've I'd venture to say I've spent over twice as much on board games as I have on the video games. Uh, the little miniature-based games get quite expensive, uh, especially some that I that I've bought from that cost euros instead of U.S. dollars. Yeah, that conversion is pretty killer when you get up there. Torment of Tides of Numenera, don't even get me fucking started. If I had to pick one game out of this to come out. And so I could play it right now. It'd probably be Torment. That's the I, I bid the most on this game, or bid I pledge the most on this game more than any other video game that I probably ever will pledge on. Probably more than I should have. Uh, but I'm looking forward. I'll have a nice little tombstone engraved with my name in the game, and I'll be getting lots of signed boxed goodies and stuff like that. So definitely stay tuned for Torment Tides of Numenera. Looking forward to that. Zombicide Season 2, I did a video on on that. I'm still waiting for the second wave of goodies from that. I guess I could. There's not really much to do. Uh, let me scroll down here and show you. These are all the uh, stretch goals that were met due, due to the funding that this game had. So... I'm still waiting on a lot of these figurines. Uh, you got Woody Harrelson, um, Jason Statham, and the Zombie 4 versions. You got the Big Lebowski, John Goodman. Uh, you got Achille, who is uh, Hannibal Lecter. Uh, Nicholas Cage there. You got the guys from Shaun of the Dead. You got Kurt Russell, Jack Nichol Nicholson. Uh, a lot of a lot of actors that they just renamed. And uh, looking forward to getting all the rest of those characters. Pamela Anderson. Uh, this is the douchebag kid from Breaking Bad. So looking forward to getting the rest of those. And as I get them painted, I'll be doing a, uh, I'll be doing a video of that. So yeah, as you can see from me reloading there, quite extensive. All right, Dreamfall chapters, the longest journey. Did the 
part one and part two of that game. So if you haven't checked out those LPs, check them out. Give you a better idea about what Dreamfall, the chapters, is going to be. Uh, Lord British's Shroud of the Avatar. Oh, Jesus. I don't know about this one, folks. Uh, it's A lot of people are saying that it's going to be pay to win, but a lot of people are saying no, 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 not at all. There are buyable items. There are buyable. You can buy bigger houses, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm definitely not happy with the way this is turning out. I was kind of hoping it would um, veer more toward the classics, you know, the Ultimas 5, 6, and 7s style. I, I knew, obviously, from the beginning that there would be an online structure to it, but it's definitely seeming like it's going to be much more geared toward Ultima Online with, you know, the 3D look. And uh, let's just hope that it, it turns out to be a good game. There's playable versions of it out now. I haven't even bothered, to be honest, because I'm, I'm fucking frightened, to, be, to, to tell you the truth. I mean, it's just hearing a lot of mixed feelings about this one. So moving onward. It doesn't deserve any more of my time, I can tell you that. Uh, my Dwarven Forge game tiles, I do have all of those. They did show up a while back. Just basically Dungeons & Dragons tiles for you know when you're playing a D&D game you can kind of map out the actual game in 3D and I'll probably I'll, I'll, I'll show those in the next video um, kind of like what they look like or actually I'll probably do when I get some more miniatures painted I'll probably do a video with them all by themselves I'll just build a huge dungeon because I got a shit ton of these tiles so I can make a pretty massive dungeon and then I'll I'll add some miniatures to it and uh, spruce it up a bit Right now, they're just sitting in the box. Myth, it's another board game. Uh, should be getting that here shortly. Uh, Divinity, Original Sin, I did a real small video on that. That game looks very promising. I'm pretty excited about that. And that should definitely be coming out here later this year. Zapocalypse Aftermath, this was an expansion or, a, or an additional uh, add-on part to the original Zapocalypse game, which is another board game. Just some extra miniatures, fortification, sandbags, walls, uh, some more zombies, things like that. Very nicely, I, I, I did receive all that, and I'll show those in the next video. They're very nice, nice detail. They, they came out real good. Galaxy Defenders, this is a kind of a sci-fi co-op board game. It's kind of like Zombicide, if you will, but, but all sci-fi. That is shipping very shortly, so I'll have that to show off soon. Uh, Jagged Alliance Flashback. Haven't been hearing a whole lot about this. So I hope they're fucking working on the game with the money they raised. Legendary Monsters. I actually just pledged a dollar on this game so I could rag on it. Because it's fucking stupid. It looks stupid. It is stupid. The guy that made it is stupid. And I got in all kinds of trouble with Kickstarter for calling his project stupid in the comment section. And they gave me a warning. So I told them to go fuck themselves. And then they gave me a second warning. So at that point, I shut up. Dead Zone. Uh, this is a sci-fi miniature board game, basically, uh, where you pick teams. Uh, it's kind of like Warhammer 40K, more or less. But this was a I pledged quite a lot of money on this. And I, I do have most of it. They're sending out the second wave, if you will, very shortly for the rest of the miniatures. But I bought all the factions, all, all the miniatures, uh, got quite a lot of terrain that came with it. Um, just need to get to painting. I need to stop doing so many fucking LPs and start picking up my paintbrush again. Melorium. This is a game book. This is uh, kind of like Lone Wolf. Or if you played kind of like an RPG version of Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, there's, they were real popular back in the 80s and early 90s. Uh, where you'd get a little character sheet in the beginning. And then you'd read through the book and you could choose different options. You'd roll dice to see if you succeeded and then turn to the appropriate page based on that success or failure. Um, so this is, a, I got a nice hardbound version of that and I have received that. Hold Fast is the same thing and I have both of these so I'll be able to show those in the next video. Uh, Escape, that's another board game, kind of a mix of sci-fi and mutants and shit. That should be shipping uh, to me as well very soon. Massive Chalice by Double Fine. Uh, they haven't been releasing a whole lot on this, and that's probably because, in all honesty, they had to scramble to get uh, Broken Age out correctly, uh, which you saw my Broken Age video. I definitely wasn't 
impressed. Um, I'm almost glad I didn't pledge. I would have probably had to at least spend $100. Who knows what I would have spent because of it just being Tim Schafer. Um, but the boxed game alone was $100. So I might still get a version of that. I got a buddy that would probably sell it to me because he wasn't impressed with the game either, but he did kickstart it. Uh, but I'm not. I wouldn't put any more than hundred dollars into the Broken Age game, and and that still remains to be seen based on the second part. Definitely not as long as it should have been. The puzzles are a fucking joke. Um, that game should have definitely been geared more around Monkey Island and Day of the Tentacle. It should have had two play modes, just like Monkey Island Two, where there was the simplified version and then the the hardcore version where the puzzles are much more difficult. Um, so, not happy about that. Vampire, this game didn't make it, unfortunately. I did the LP for the original. This was a Kickstarter where he tried to launch like a prequel. It didn't fund. So, who knows if we'll ever see that. Euphoria, this is a Euro, kind of a Euro board game. If you're into board gaming at all, I do have that. That showed up, and it's very, it's beautiful. I'm glad I pledged on it. The components are great. Uh, one of the reasons why I pledged on it was because it did so; it was so successful, and uh, there was a lot of good Kickstarter rewards. Chaos Ball. This is kind of a uh, Blood Bowl for any of those those who got into the miniature game Blood Bowl or played the video game Blood Bowl. This is kind of a take on that, more or less. The football field is now kind of an arena, but it involves two teams and a fucking ball. So I got uh, pretty much all the miniatures on that. And uh, I just wanted to have a different type of game. I don't really have any arena board type sports games. So I went ahead and pledged on that. Plus it's, uh, it was from Cool Mini or not. And they do a lot of good board games. They helped with the Zombicide and all that. Got some uh, playing cards just because they were looking cool. I think I, you know, five bucks for the playing cards. And then they had this kick-ass Minotaur t-shirt. So I bought a t-shirt from them. And I'll show that when I get them. I don't have the cards or the t-shirt yet. Cthulhu Wars. Cthulhu Wars was a very successful board game Kickstarter. Real huge minis. Very intricately detailed. Uh, really looking forward to getting that and getting back into painting so that I actually have some painting to show you guys. Satellite Rain. This is, of course, the spiritual successor for uh, Syndicate. The game Syndicate, which I should be LPing sometime this year, hopefully. Um... So, yeah, not too much is coming through the uh, pipe on that line. But uh, I'm sure they're working on it, and hopefully that turns out to be a good game. This is another uh, kind of like the Dwarven Forge tiles, or the dungeons, as you can see from the picture. Just a 3D dungeon, resin dungeon kit. It didn't make it. Ballroom. I did a video on Ballroom. It's very classic, uh, old-school-looking graphics. Uh, I ended up pledging a bunch of money at the end to get uh, Lug Lug in this game as well. Uh, also, uh, I get to create a couple items, in-game items. Um, Lug Lug will be wielding a club with his name on it that you can pick up and use in the game. Uh, and he's going to be kind of a mini-boss. So I, I even talked to the creators and they agreed to make Lug Lug a mini-boss. He won't be a common creature. He won't be... He'll just be a creature that you fight once and get his get his club and beat the shit out of people with his club with. So that, that should be interesting when that starts coming through. Legend of Ia. Did a Kickstarter a while back with a uh, compilation of games. This is one of them. I wanted to get a box version of this and pledge on it, but what ended up happening was I just was into too much shit at the time. Didn't have the money for it. And uh, just ended up doing the digital download. Uh, but anyways, what ended up happening was the creator ended up emailing me and asking me to do a video, which I still need to do and I still plan on doing, of his other game. Uh, Ultonius, something like that. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I'm going to do, and then also there's a demo for this, so I'm going to do both those in a video. And uh, he said he hooked me up with a uh, box copy, a signed box copy of the game. So it looks like I might end up getting a box copy of that after all. Uh, El Alum is a adventure game. There's a little demo out on, out on that as well that I was tinkering around with. And uh, so, 
pretty good game from what I can tell. I mean, it's real small. As far as I know, it's only a two-man team. And uh, it's looking pretty good. It's definitely got an interesting storyline to it. So hopefully that pans out to be good. Seven Days to Die is kind of a Minecraft zombie take. Uh, no, I'm not into Minecraft, nor do I ever plan on being. I tried it out, just not my cup of tea. But when you add zombies into that equation, all of a sudden it becomes my shit. So you basically build up your defensive defense and fortifications, you know, put up uh, dig moats, uh, put up walls, you know, spiked fences and all kinds of different defense lines against the zombies during the day. And then at night, I, it sounds like waves and waves of zombies come. I think it's that actually you can do the pre-access on Steam right now. Uh, I didn't. I just bid. I just pledged bid. Uh, to me, this is all fucking bids because I'm I'm giving away free money at first. But um, uh, from what I hear, it's it's looking pretty cool. You can uh, get alpha access or whatever it is now, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Demon Wars Reformation. This is a RPG system that's being created by R.A. Salvatore and his kids. Uh, you know, it, it could be a, a piece of dog shit with a red ribbon on it. If, and if R.A. Salvatore endorses it, I'm going to buy it. You probably know that much about me now. But anyways, this is the campaign book signed by him and his uh, two sons, I think, that are working on the system. The system actually sounds really cool. I'm, I'm generally not into buying a bunch of different RPG systems. I used to uh, play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons from the very first edition. And uh, obviously I just moved, so I don't have a group together. Still working on that. Uh, but I would like to get back into it and, and get back into playing a couple different systems. And this would definitely be one of them. Dungeon Mans. This is a roguelike game. Um, not a whole lot to say about it. It looks it looks good. The, the graphics are nice and crisp. Um, again, I just pledged the minimum on it just to get me in the door with the game, but definitely a little kick ass from what I what I saw of it. King's Forge is another board game. It's kind of a crafting board game. Uh, Ghost Song. This is a Metroidvania type game. Looks really cool. It's kind of got a little uh, horror element to it. Uh, you know, a little. Some some tense levels, some eerie levels. It's kind of reminded me of when I was watching the demo of it. Kind of reminded me of a, a Dead Space meets Metroid. Definitely has that uh, feeling there, and also uh, really good art, and uh, sounds like it's going to be a good game. The War of Kings. This is another deck of cards. I just like cool cards for some reason. It's it's the board gamer in me. You know, I spent five bucks, got a deck of cards that aren't your typical deck of cards. I actually have this, so I'll be able to show those in the next video that I do for the physical goods. Project Phoenix. It's going to be a pretty kick-ass looking anime slash RTS game. A lot of AAA talent, just like the uh, just like it says right there. Looking forward to that a lot. They've been giving a lot of uh, feedback and info on how the game's coming along and it's looking pretty cool as far as how you can upgrade your units and uh, so definitely looking forward to that. Wrath of Kings this is another kind of Warhammer 40k game except this one involves like some pretty cool different factions. Here I'll actually open this up and show you some of these miniatures and again I pledged a, I pledged a buttload on this just so I could get all the miniatures but you have kind of the Oriental Eastern uh, group. You have the uh, the sea on the underwater group, kind of like the sea creatures, cyber cybernetic sea creatures. The Shale Han, that's the the Oriental Eastern house. Uh, this is like they got like ogre magi and magi and uh, dragon legionnaires. Uh, these are some of the different sculpts that they're going to be using. Uh, then you kind of have the demon race, which is Nasir. These are all like demonic, spike-headed, you know, demons. Check out the, the goat chick with the big goat titties in the background. And this is some of the, the, the demon faction miniatures. Uh, then you have the House of Technis. This is kind of like the little gnomes. They also have like these human-sized pig-headed creatures that help them out. It's real cool. Here he's got a little octopus 
uh, creature that is basically his mount. Uh, here's another little gnome with a whip on top of a you know a big ogre looking dude. They're a really cool looking race. This is some of their miniatures. Then you have the Goritzi. This is kind of the vampire race. They have ghouls, vampires, werewolves. I'm a I'm a freak when it comes to miniatures. As soon as I see a miniatures that I like, I have to have them. Even though I haven't done any painting lately. This is the uh, underwater, the Hadros, the underwater race, very octopus and crustacean crabs, things like that. So yeah, I ended up buying all those factions. Uh, and then they have these, you can't really see them too well here, but they, they come with these giant monsters. That's the big demon lord. Uh, the underwater race gets this big kraken. Guy with the trident mounted on a kraken. I don't think they have any better pictures. Let me see here. Maybe they do. Even had some zombicide crossovers. Yeah, I don't see any better pictures, but... Anyways, pretty killer. I'll show those once I actually get those to arrive. Mighty Number no. 9, this, obviously, this is, uh, you've probably heard of that. That's a spiritual successor to Mega Man. That's looking pretty kick-ass. Uh, Octopus City Blues. It's kind of looked like a really eerie, crazy... Uh, uh, I don't know. This, this guy obviously had heavy, heavy inspirations from Tentacle Games, Day of the Tentacle, and... Cthulhu maybe, um, but the whole game's like based around a, a city with tentacles everywhere, so that should be interesting. It didn't do super great, but it was just too unique to pass up. Hyperlight Drifter, this game, kind of like an action adventure looking game. Um, it's gonna be. It was a real successful uh, indie project that this guy did. It ended up blowing up, and just he he brought in I think over a million dollars. Um, so there's going to be a lot of good content to that game. Death Road to Canada. This is kind of like a, z a zombie survival game where you have a group of guys that you just have to see how long you can survive. Uh, and it looked fun and cute. And I think I put like $10 on pledge on it. Uh, this is Ninja Dice. This is just a dice rolling game. It's a board game or a non-board game, a dice rolling game. Uh, and it was cool looking. So I checked it out. Mars Attacks. This is an, another miniature war game. Uh, from the same guys that did the Dead Zone game. I'm a, I'm a pretty big Mars Attacks fan. I always loved the comics and the movies. So I put in on this and got a nice big army of Martians and humans. Uh, Bones 2. I missed out on the Bones 1 uh, Kickstarter. However, I found a, a, a seller willing to sell me the entire Kickstarter for a very reasonable price. Um, a lot of money, but reasonable. Um... So I ended up getting every single miniature from the first Bones. This one, however, had some sci-fi miniatures. And when I do start doing my D&D campaigns and things like that, I really, I'm not into the sci-fi as much. So I basically got all the miniatures that were based around fantasy, which is pretty much everything except one of the expansions. Um, Worlds of Magic. This is a spiritual successor to Masters of Magic, Masters of Orion. Um, but definitely more intended to be like Masters of Magic. Way of the Tiger. This is another game book that I used to read when I was small. You're basically a ninja. And you learn all these different ninja arts. And as you read through the book, again, you turn to different pages based on your decisions and your actions. And you fight all these different cool monsters. Well, they wanted to do a campaign to make a hardcover version. Uh, they did pretty good. There were some uh, hiccups along the way, especially during post-production. But I did finally get the first book yesterday, which is actually all I pledged on because they're $50 a book, which in my eyes is a lot. But apparently there's no way they could have produced this for any less. So they're nice books. I'll give it that. But, you know, $50 fucking dollars is, is not chump change. I don't give a shit who you are for a book. Um, but anyways, I'm, I'm, I was a huge fan of the Lone Wolf series, which I own. 99% of those in hardback. They did a collector rendition for those, and I have to. I end up having to buy them from Europe, so it cost me an arm and a leg. I think I just spent like uh, over seventy dollars to have two of the hardcover books sent to me. Um, so it's no joke if you're living in the states and you're trying to collect these game books uh, in collector format. I could get on eBay and get the soft covers for next to nothing, 
But if you want the nice collector's hardback version, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Journey Wrath of Demons, really excited about this board game. This is an Oriental-based board game uh, based off the Monkey King. And I'll show you some of that. It's co-op. You fight against all these different demons and undead samurai. And I'll show you some of the miniature here. Here's a lot of the game art here. That's like the Monkey King. I didn't go too crazy on this, but I'm, I'm definitely went crazy enough to get all the miniatures. Uh, they got some undead zombie miniatures. Trippy Taka. Zao Zian. Uh, so they got some cool stuff on this one. There's the, the huge dragon. There's a big kick-ass uh, panda warrior. He's pretty cool looking. And then they even had some of these these demonic drider drow looking characters for the expansion. And all kinds of scenery, bridges, wells, doors. So yeah, looking forward to getting and playing that. Run fight or die. Another this is a zombie board game. I I swear if it's a, if it's a board game and it's got a zombie theme, I fucking buy it. I don't even I don't even look at the game. I just buy it. Uh, but it looks pretty cool. It did uh, did pretty well on the Kickstarter front. So, Abduction is the spiritual successor to Mist and Riven. Need I say more? Shadows of Brimstone. This is kind of a Cthulhu meets uh, Western Cowboys and Indian style board game. This did exceptionally well. Um, it was quite a bit to put in on it. It did $1.3 million. Um, and it, it was kind of an interesting Kickstarter because I'll show you the tiers here. If you got in early enough, the first $25 got basically the complete thing for $325. Now, before you're like, $325 for a board game? What the fuck? I agree. It's insanity. But welcome to Kickstarter. Uh, but that was just the beginning. Then they created another 25 bracket for 350. So already it's jumped up $25 for the same thing that you're getting here. And then it jumped up again to 375. So the first 75, well actually 76 people got in at a really good price for the amount of shit that you're getting. Uh, you're not going to be able to go buy this retail and get it for cheaper than that. I didn't come in until the $400 level. So yeah. I actually pledged $400 on this board game, and uh, I'm not sad about it. There's going to be a lot of good stuff coming, but it kept going. See, I got in with the first 100 people, so I didn't get robbed too bad. Then they did 50 baggers at 425 and another 50 at 450 and then they opened it up to 475 with with 1,000 backers. That almost filled up, but it looks like two people at the end said, wait a minute, I don't really make that much money or I don't have $475 for a board game. Uh, and they also had 416 backers at 480 So for the same thing, at 480 at three or excuse me, at 325 almost a 1,000 extra people paid, or 500 people paid $480. So this Kickstarter, of course, caused all kinds of havoc and controversy and well, how the fuck can you charge that much more for the same thing what they ended up doing to kind of counteract that was they gave extra credit which you can see down here they gave basically in store credit to get extra miniatures things like that however there wasn't a whole lot of add-ons that were really worth getting so and I'll show you there's Belial well, he's worth getting the minecart level basically gets all this these are all the stretch goals that it hit you get the game, the expansion, and these are all extra miniatures that you get. Cards, more miniatures, there's six miniatures in that one. More classes that you can play. Actual extra tiles for the game, uh, 20 extra tiles. More miniatures, some serpent warriors. Another class, another expansion. More miniatures, more cards. Just kept going and going and going. All this was basically included you get a little pack mule to help you carry goods another expansion this is all included just if you got the base game not even the four hundred dollar game or the 325 if you were lucky still going all these miniatures cards these are all going to be included you even get belial he was at the one million dollar mark 
You get fucking Big Daddy from Bioshock. Serpents and, and Tron Hunters, which are mutants. And basically it stopped right here. I actually think it hit 1.35. It got real close. So I'm not sure if we're going to get the Tron Hunters. But you can see where the check marks stop. Uh, basically all that and above. Definitely included. Then... If you pledge as much as I did, or 325 or 480 you get all this stuff for free, or included. I shouldn't say for free, because it's certainly not free. But this is all included as well. You get the Gambler class, the Dark Zone Shaman class, which comes with the big bear, because you can turn it into a fucking bear. You're a shaman. Comes with the Tribal Human class, Doctors, Cowboy. Comes with the Mission Pack with Vampires. A Mission Pack with the Lost Army, which is kind of like the Undead Army. Uh, werewolf mission pack, succubi mission pack, black fang tribe mission pack, some like crazy evil Indian dudes, some more mini bosses, some more terrain, more minis, more terrain, doorways, mine carts and barrels and shit, more cards, then these extra large creatures, which are basically, they show you the comparison, this is the normal uh, 28 millimeter miniature, and then this is the boss, you get the kraken, the sand kraken even. Giant burrower worm from Tremors the movie. You get a huge Velociraptor, a Terralisk, another cult of miniatures with cards. You get a big Cthulhu looking dude with a giant rune sword. Uh, and then you get a, a spaceship with tiles and more miniatures. You get the fucking flying android from Empire Strikes Back. More cards, cannon crew cards, samurai. And, that, and then you get all that for added in, that package. So quite a lot of shit for $400 regardless. If you know anything about miniatures, even plastic miniatures, um, that would retail probably close to $1,000. So yeah, I put a lot into it, but um, um, if I wanted to, I could sell that on eBay right now for double my money easy. Uh, Lords of Zulima, this is going to be epic, folks. I'm really looking forward to this RPG. It's just, it looks kick-ass. If you haven't checked out Lords of Zulima and you're a big and you like the Legend of Grimrock my LP of that you're going to want to check out Lords of Zulima it's it's not going to be all first person but it's very very much akin to the Wizardry Might and Magic series um, they're keeping it real old school I got a lot of faith in them I actually pledged on this on Indiegogo it started on Indiegogo as a campaign and I actually you know, pledge for my box version back there. And then they decided to come do Kickstarter as well and made even more money on Kickstarter than Indiegogo. Imagine that. So more funding into the game equals better game. I'm okay with that. This is just a winner promo to add more cards to my dungeon roll game. Deathfire, unfortunately, didn't make it. So I'm not going to spend any more time on it. But it was going to be epic. That's all I can say. Don't know how it didn't make it, but it didn't make it. Confederate Express, another zombie uh, indie type game. Alien vs. Predator. This is another board game that I was really excited about. Um, the miniatures are looking kick-ass. Uh, this is a special limited Kickstarter edition. If you did not get this Kickstarter uh, edition, you will never get the game unless you buy it from someone that did. You won't get this version of the game, I should say. They're going to do a mass market version later where the quality of the miniatures is, is not even comparable to the quality that we're getting here. This is a special type of uh, cast that they're doing with a polyurethane plastic. And uh, this is a limited Kickstarter version box, everything. So I'm a huge nutcase when it comes to Alien and Predator. Um, I, I, obviously, I grew up on the movies. So, um, yeah, had to have this. They even did a 3D terrain set that you could have bought. But now this is all in Euros. So as you can see, this can get pretty expensive. 375 euros is five, six hundred dollars at least in uh, American USD. So, but these are the miniatures painted, uh, and yeah, pretty fantastic looking. Even not painted, painted these look awesome. And you can see they're going to come in bits and pieces, so you can really modify and customize them. When the when the mass market game comes out. They're going to be basically one piece already. They're going to already be posed. They're going to already have whatever guns and heads are going to be all placed on them. And again, it's going to be a cheaper plastic. Um, so, yeah, going to be kick-ass. And we unlocked a lot of the stretch goals here. 
Uh, we even got the Alien Queen. She's going to be in it. The If you've played the Alien vs. Predator arcade game, uh, the big Arnold Schwarzenegger-looking dude and uh, the chick, Kurosawa, I forget their name, but they're going to be in it. Uh, we got the Power Loader is going to be in it. The the Colonel Marine Sergeant's in it. You get the... Um, we, there's even miniatures with the Predators cloaked, which is kind of a clear plastic that they're using. So it's going to be epic. Faux show. Uh, what else? Stasis. This is a kind of a survival horror adventure game. Um, it did pretty good, too. Looking forward to that. All right, moving on. Templar Intrigue. It's a werewolf-type game. If you ever played Werewolf the card game basically everybody gets a roll and you can have up to like 60 players and this is a real good party game and there's villagers and werewolves basically and the villagers are trying to figure out who and who's the werewolves which players are werewolves and vice versa it's a really good game uh, lots of laughs this is kind of a different take on it uh, Makina, Machina uh, Arcana or Machina, or however the fuck you say it. Machina. Uh, this is kind of a um, steampunk, I guess, board game. And it looked cool. I didn't have any steampunk board games, so I was like, well, let me pledge on this one. They didn't want an arm and a leg for it, so. Uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to showing you guys all these board games in more detail eventually. I think I'll do like start doing some, let's, let's take a look at game order board game collection, blah, blah, blah. Hero Quest 25th anniversary was canceled because of copyright infringement. Uh, what they did was they relaunched their campaign on a Spanish, I think, I believe it's Spanish. Pretty damn sure the game's being made over in Spain. Uh, but um, they relaunched it on a, a Kickstarter called Lazanzos or, or Lazanznos or something like that. And uh, basically, they still made well over, I mean, shit, they made like 1.5 million euros. Over there, I pledged on it. It can It comes with a whole shitload of extra miniatures. Plus, it's the core game in essence. A whole bunch of new classes. Um, really looking forward to that. It's one of the earlier board games that I played. I actually used to paint this board game and sell it on eBay for buco bucks. And uh, that was back when you could get it for cheaper, of course. So that'll be cool. Got some battle system sci-fi train. I more or less got this because of the Alien vs Predator board game. Uh, I didn't want to really invest in on the actual the, the 3D train modular. Uh, as you can see, I've been investing in quite a lot of Kickstarters. And I don't make that much fucking money, I can tell you that. Not enough. <laughs> Way less than what I've been putting into Kickstarter, for sure. Um, but, you know, you just, you just learn to buy lettuce and that's it from the grocery store to make up for it. And uh, so anyways, all kidding aside... This is some sci-fi modular terrain. It's kind of like a real thick cardboard. It's all very nicely detailed, though. Um, it's it's already got the, the color in it and everything. So I'm going to probably end up using that for my... If I do any kind of 40K gaming or uh, definitely for my a, my Alien vs. Predator board game, uh, I'm going to use that for that. Bigfootsies is just a cute card game I thought I'd pledge on. Interstellaria. It's a little uh, kind of a... Reminded me of uh, Star Control, so I wanted to get in on that. Dex, Cyberpunk, I'm all about that. It's a, a 2D RPG, which is a pretty interesting, a side-scrolling uh, RPG where you're kind of like a, a cyber hacker, things like that. So it's got a little shadow run feel to it. Uh, and that's going to be released on Steam and all kinds of platforms. Then Mega Man the board game Kickstarter came out. Had to had to jump on that. Who doesn't love Mega Man? Coin Age. This is a pay what you want. Little, you know, this is a game that fits in your pocket. I, I threw them five bucks. The minimum was three bucks. The recommended pledge was five bucks. And it's by uh, Tasty Minstrel Games, which made Dungeon Roll, which I was a huge fan of. So uh, I put in on that. Kung Fury. This is the first movie production that I pledged on. Uh, very 80s looking movie if you haven't checked out the trailer for kung fury and you're into that old campy b movie shit check it out man i mean you missed out if you didn't get in put in on this i mean it just looks phenomenal unfortunately it didn't quite raise enough he wanted like a million dollars to do a full two hour movie um so it looks like we're only getting a 30 minute movie but he'll probably 
um, end up, he, he didn't make quite a substantial amount over the minimum. So it looks like we'll be getting uh, a full version movie or a um, you know full f full fledged film in the future. Burgo, another pay what you want game. Tasty Minstrels just started going ape shit with this pay what you want games, and they did fairly well. They were making you know ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars off these games. So even with people just paying three dollars a head, so this is just like another little tiny quick game. Um, the reason I pledge on these and I like to buy these is because. Uh, I play with my family now that I live here, and, and trust me, they can't play anything with that's too rule intensive, especially moms. She just doesn't have the patience for learning all that shit. So I like getting games like this that I can bring over for non-board gamers, and it's a good gateway drug for the non-board gamers. It's a good way to get them hooked and just have some quick fun. Same thing with Tiny Epic Kingdoms, another small game, but this one... Just blew up, almost made a million dollars, or, or how much did this make? Oh, no, quarter million. But this one looks really cool. You get kind of like your terrain, and you got all your good old little meeple-type wooden cubes, and then you get all these cool races to pick from. You got constructs or golem, golems, satyrs, uh, and he added a whole bunch of races because the game started doing so well. Uh, let's see, where are they? There we go. Halflings, goblins, lizardmen, undead, Valkyries with wings, dark elves, merfolk, centaurs, shapeshifters. So you got all these extra cool uh, races to play with. Uh, then there's another zombie board game. Whoa, no, imagine that. Fucking game hoarder pledged on a zombie board game. This one's actually was quite unique. Um, it's kind of a, it's a very fast action, quick paced game. You put in an audio CD and the audio CD, I guess, plays for 15 minutes and it's got like, every time you hear a zombie groan, you have to add zombies to the board. So basically every player is trying to take their turn as fast as they can to get through to the, the end of the board. And, uh, it's pretty cool. Zombies 13, I have the entire Zombies uh, Twilight Creation Collection, which is basically Zombies 1 through 12. Um, it's a great game. It's fun. It's easy to learn. It's it's pretty quirky. It's not too rule intensive, which is nice. It's, it's definitely easy to teach. So I got in on their uh, Part 13 Kickstarter, which basically did terrible compared to what it should have done. Uh, but whatever. Give me my Kickstarter exclusives in the fucking game. I'm happy. This is another. Uh, this is another pay what you want game from Tasty Minstrel. This is actually their last one so far that they're doing for now. Um, another five bucks, nothing big. Uh, and then they did Scoville, which is I think going to be the last last campaign that they run. This one ends in uh, a little over two days. This is a game about growing hot peppers, folks. Obviously, I'm getting it. Draco Magi. This is this is a card based game. It's it's not really a deck building game like Magic per se. Uh, you have a finite amount of cards that are already preordained from the from the game itself, but you get different dragons, different abilities, and ways to modify them. And it's it's you know it's a it's a I think it's a two player game. I'm not sure, um, but it looked cool and it wasn't that much, so I pledged on it. Quest for Infinity. Uh, Infamy Companion. This is basically a red decoder clue book that they're doing. This is an an homage basically to the old Sierra clue books and all the old clue books that use the little red film decoder to to check out the clues. That way you didn't see more than you needed to. Um, and this is uh, basically for that, that clue book. I didn't actually get in on the Quest for Infamy Kickstarter, but after the Kickstarter when I had some more funds, I went to the website and I still purchased a nice collector's box edition, so I'll be getting that as well. And last, but certainly not least, folks, really happy about this. In fact, I'm going to be doing a separate video about this to kind of promote it. The Book of Unwritten Tales Part 2. Now, we all enjoyed my LP of the first one and my little song that I wrote for it. Hold on, phone. That's nice. I just got ass dialed from a guy. That's not, not nearly as cool as getting asked out from a girl. Uh, but anyways, Book of Unwritten Tales 2. 
Uh, as far as I know, picks up right where the first one left off, and uh, it's going to be fun. You got uh, Evo's back with, uh, man, I know I forget the names, uh, Wilbur, the mage, uh, and then you got Critter there with uh, Nathaniel Bonnet. So this one's still got 31 days to go, already doubled the doubled what they wanted. So it's going to be cool. And stay tuned. I'm going to do a little promotion for this video. I'm working King Art Game. Actually, they contacted me and asked me to do this. So I'm going to see if I can get some free goodies out of it. So that was kind of uh, kind of cool getting contacted by uh, the makers of a game that you know you really enjoyed. Anyways, folks, that's it for the Game Hoarder Kickstarters. I hope you enjoyed all 50 minutes of it. That's a uh, grand total of 85 projects. Plus, I backed uh, Star Citizen from the website, Quest for Infamy, Grimoire from Indiegogo, Legend of Zulima for Indiegogo, and of course, Heroes Quest 25th Anniversary from Lanzanzo. So, I got quite a few projects coming to me. Stay tuned for the uh, the physical good video, and also that video for the Book of Unwritten Tales. Thanks for watching.